everyone, um, Mathieu again. So I'm here to present you a second tutorial about uh, the editing process uh, we developed here uh, for the Gooseberry project with the new Blender builds. So first thing, um, as usual, I would uh, advise you to go to uh, builder.blender.org to download the latest Gooseberry branch version of Blender. I'm working with this one right now. I just downloaded it. Uh, I'm a back user, so uh, I took the 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 60 bit, uh, 64 bit version. And uh, just a quick tip. Also, I saw like uh, some people uh, uh, was wondering how to have the terminal uh, showing Blender running for debug stuff, or just if you have crashing issues or stuff like that, to be sure that you have a terminal that keeps. Um, info of uh, what's going on. So if you download this, you unzip the thing uh, in your app folder. If you want to always be sure that you will start Blender with the terminal, uh, you do a right click on Blender. Uh, it's in French, so but it's uh, say, basically saying that you have to. It, it, it uh, says that you have to show package content. So that display what is inside uh, Blender actually. So you show the contents, you go to macOS, and there you have a terminal icon. So what I do is I just uh, command Alt drag the, uh, this icon here. So it stays here, and uh, if you click on this, it will warn you that it's uh, uh, something that was downloaded online. So if you've never done this before, you have to go to your system preferences and allow. Uh, oops, sorry. And allow. Uh, blah, 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 where is it? I don't really remember. I think it's here. But uh, anyway, you have to allow uh, OSX to um, to run uh, external packages and software. So you just say yes, and then here is your terminal with Blender. That opens. That's wonderful. So uh, let's start. Uh, I hopefully won't make this too long, uh, but it's a bit wide topic. So unfortunately, unfortunately, it might be. So I'll try to make it brief. So basically, our case was to use Blender for editing footage we shot with actors. So we had the, the, the two actors uh, in a studio. We put we had several microphones. Each one had a specific microphone on them, uh, and we had also uh, room microphones for the, the overall uh, dialogues, echo stuff, that we don't use a lot, actually. Uh, so we had two, two audio files, one per actors. We had three cameras, one on each actors, sorry, and uh, one for the wide shot. So each of them also had their proper sound, and we had to sync uh, those five microphones, three cameras and two on the actors, with the live video footage we recorded. So that's why I'll try to cover uh, on this tutorial and, uh, and I will also show you how, to, how we use this to, to, to edit with the layout files from the 3D uh, images we were working on on the Cosmos Landromat movie. So let's go on this. So again, a big thanks to Andonis and uh, and Campbell for the new tools they developed for the for the video editing tools. So um, I have a simple uh, workflow and workspace. So here is just a basic workspace for editing. Uh, all we've shot are 24 frames per second, and it's full HD. So the settings are quite normal, and I will reach for them. So the tutorial, shooting footage, here they are. So this is the camera we had. So let me check that I have the right scenes. So I will put them on a list, sorry. So camera A, camera B, yeah, sorry. And camera C. So uh, for this scene, there we go. So I'm just, I'm assuming you know the basic stuff about Blender Editor. So um, I'm not covering step by step what I'm doing. So I just basically 
import those footage into my timeline and if I use the amazing overdrop thing I can see my footage so uh, this is the I will turn off the sound I guess uh, sorry I need a timeline yeah this is the other workspace I have so one very important thing is that you always need to have AV sync on if you want to have image and audio all together. So that's extremely important. That will uh, allow Blender to synchronize audio and video in every part of Blender, either if you are in the 3D viewport doing animation or in the VSC editing something, it will uh, make sure that your audio and image are in sync, whatever happens. And it will mostly uh, skip frames to allow a smooth playback. So it might feel a bit choppy. And that's also something we were fighting a lot on, uh, on the Gooseberry project. Because as you see, I have three video footage, quite long, like four minutes each. Uh, H.264 formats, because it was shot with DSLRs. And H.262, H.265, or formats like that, are really unfriendly for editors, softwares, editing softwares. Because they have high compression rates going on to make them small and lightweight. Uh, but there's not every frame in the in the file. It has gops, group of uh, image compression algorithm going on. So uh, there's only one out of ten frames that are full, fully encoded. Uh, the rest are just um, algorithm detecting motion and colors just to display the frames, but they are not fully encoded into the file to make it li more lightweight. So the thing is that your editing software as Blender, when they are reading this and you stop on a frame, has to do some uh, CPU calculation a lot to actually display one frame. So your software is really fighting the, the, the algorithm to be able to display you frame by frame the footage, which is a very big problem as soon as you start cutting through them. And if you have multiple cuts in multiple footage, it gets worse and worse, especially if you have 10 video tracks. So we try to find a way to work around this and I will show you how. So, uh, the, the trick is to use the proxies. So basically, we will convert those three uh, files, video files, without doing anything yet on them. We will convert them to another format, not the H.264 format. I'm just adjusting my timeline. Duration, so as you can see, uh, my Blender is quite slow. Uh, first, because I'm recording the video tutorial, so that's already CPU consuming. And also because, well, it's H.264 formats and Blender is fighting it. So uh, I will convert this with the proxy tools we have uh, that were uh, improved a lot. So the thing you need to do, you select one video footage and um, you go to the property panel on this and go to the, the proxy uh, tab, so the proxy panel. So you, there's a bunch of options here, uh, some, some are new, some are not, but basically uh, the, the convenient thing is that uh, you want to assume that you will work with all your video footage which are from the same source and you want to edit them the same way. So basically you won't miss, mess with uh, frame rates or um, formats and stuff. So you'll use the per project option. And what it allows you is just every proxy that will be calculated by Blender would be uh, set into this specific folder, which is very convenient, especially like we did for the Gooseberry project. We had all our sources, uh, all the rush, the footage we shot were put on the server on the, over the network. But Editing over the network, or in your, your case, maybe on a USB drive or something, is not always convenient because you have uh, maybe some bandwidth with issues, speed problems, whatever, if it's over the network or a slow hard drive. But doing the proxies uh, on your local hard drive, and in my case on an SSD drive, either on the Linux workstation I have at the office or here on my laptop, allows you to use the, the, the to put your proxy where you know the, the speed is optimum to read them for Blender. So I'm putting this on my hard drive somewhere on my desktop, for example. So I will do here a temp proxy folder. And there, well, that's where you have to 
render the proxies. So the proxy uh, thing is just Blender will convert your footage to its own format for editing, which is AV, AVI and uh, which is very lightweight and has all the frames encoded into it. So you don't have group of images or things like H.264 does. So once you set the per project option and the directory you want this to be set, you just have to, you can select multiple of them and say the same thing. And you just set the strip option you want. So I will work at 50%, uh, maybe 25 since I'm recording, it's, it will be better, I guess. But uh, when I'm not recording, uh, when I was working on the Goodberry project, 75 or 100% was totally fine. Um, in uh, most every cases, so you can use the 100% or try the other ones if you feel like it's still laggy or that your computer is still fighting to display properly the footage. So find the right settings you need for one strip or two or three, try to edit with them and if you feel like it's okay, you can use this every time. So uh, you also have the override option which is quite nice if you if, it's, if your um, strips are actual uh, 3D renders and you want to update them, um, you have to update your proxies because the calculation has to be done all over again, so you can overwrite existing proxies, which is quite convenient. But it's, in my case, I don't need them, so uh, once I do this, the settings for those three footage is this. So it's just setting the, the, the quality of the proxies I want and then I have to cal calculate this. So I have to use the rebuild proxy and time code in the indices button, uh, which will be a bit long because again uh, this is long video footage and I'm recording my screen at the moment. So as you see my CPU mm, doesn't really like it and uh, this is just for one footage. So I might pause the recording and restart it for you not to wait this whole time. It's about to finish. Um, I started the, the recording a bit before the actual proxy calculation is over because I want to show you something that is new in Blender when you, the calculation is over. Uh, and in the meantime, I just also want to explain that uh, this can sound a bit tedious to have to calculate uh, proxies every time you want to edit something in the VAC, but most of the editing software has this problem. Uh, in Final Cut or Avid, you have to import your footage, especially in Avid, it imports and converts to its own format um, every time you import a footage. So you, you do have to do this every time you import something into it. Or Final Cut always renders uh, files on the fly. That's what I wanted to show you. It's new on the, for Mac OS X users. You have those notifications going on when your renders or uh, baking or whatever are done. Uh, and you're not uh, on Blender at the moment uh, because I'm on this uh, QuickTime player recording. Uh, so you have a notification that, al that allows you to know that the, the render is done, which is quite cool. So anyway, uh, going back to Blender. So as you can see now, my proxies are rendered. Uh, I use the overdrop to actually see my footage. Here it goes. Display the proxies because by default Blender doesn't use them. So you have to tell him to display uh, the view in the view settings panel uh, in your timeline or if you go um, here, you have the same settings here. You have to say, well, I want to see the proxies uh, I've calculated. So it's 24 5% in my case, and uh, if you zoom in, you'll clearly see the difference. I don't know if with the YouTube compression, but here uh, it's quite ugly. And if I go to this, well, this I get all the nice details and stuff, and here I can really see that I'm 25%. So that's the first thing, and the second thing, of course, is then speed. Now, going through the footage is extremely responsive. If I hide one and go for the next, it's extremely responsive and natural. If I disable the proxies, well, just clicking somewhere gets a very low, uh, long time of, um, of response from Blender just to calculate through the H.264, blah, blah. So yeah, use proxies, it will change your life as an editor. It's uh, extremely fast and responsive, uh, especially when you play also. 
So, uh, what I have to do quickly, uh, as many editors have to do, and it's also very tedious, uh, in some editing software there is plugin to do this, but here we don't, so we have to synchronize uh, the sounds. Since we had the microphones and the cameras recording with different time codes, we didn't have uh, time code connection between them, so uh, we have to manually synchronize. Every time we did a take, we did a clap, I did a clap over there, so I went somewhere where I was sure every microphone in the room will hear me and clap in my hands with uh, saying something relevant to uh, making an ID identification sentence for each um, take we had. So uh, now I have to find it and uh, synchronize all of them. So let's go over this. Take four. What a nice clap. So one good thing if you want to... Okay, so first I have to change my uh, workspace. I don't really like this one. Oh, yeah, this one is better. Um, with the timeline, it's always better. Um, is the proxies... Are the proxy enabled? No, they are not. When you change uh, workspace, you have to check this because it doesn't. Maybe it should. Hmm. I ask Antonis about this. So, uh, the, the good thing to be sure to do this properly is to have the uh, audio scrabbling uh, enabled so that you can hear sound as you move and you spot the first frame, you hear the sound and make the cut. Okay, move on to the next one. I'll do it fast. Four, take four. There. there we go. And uh, last one. Okay, so uh, scene four, take four. Same thing. So now, first frame of each strip and sound is the beginning of the clap. I should also then import the sound that we recorded externally. So scene four, take four, we have Frank and Victor character recorded. And shift test to snap them at the first frame. And I also have to find a clap on them. You can, uh, you can uh, make it easier, easier to use the waveforms if you want. So draw waveforms and, wave wave form form and try to spot the clap. You see this small bump here is the clap. And same thing, set the first frame here with Shift S. So uh, I can disable the waveform and also a new feature. Uh, you can either enable waveforms here individually per strip or you can do it in a more global way, uh, which is uh, something quite new and very nice. Uh, I'm back. Uh, sorry, I had uh, an audio recording problem for the rest of the tutorial, so I have to re-record it. Uh, it's been the fourth time I'm recording this tutorial, so I hope that's the last one. Uh, the last time I redo uh, some bits and I didn't had the right t-shirt today, so I changed it, sorry. So, uh, I was telling you about the, the, um, the waveform um, thing, the new feature we have for waveforms. So you can either, uh, the whole behavior of Blender, the previous behavior of Blender was the, allowing you to select a strip and, and display its waveform by clicking here. So um, this is very low volume thing, but you can see it happening here. Um, and now we have a new feature which is in the view uh, prop, uh, panel. Um, you can either, in the waveform drawing, you can either display waveforms off or on for the whole uh, scene, the whole um, uh, timeline you're working on. So if I show them, turn them on, you saw the little calculation Blender had to do to actually process uh, the display of it. And as you can see, it displays for all of it. Uh, or you can also turn them all off, that enables you to go to work faster if needed. Or you can switch to uh, use per strip uh, option, which is the, the previous behavior Blender had. 
I also have a cold, so I don't sound exactly the same as before. I'm sorry about that. So I've synchronized the two microphone tracks. Let's check if everything is okay. Looks like it. Okay, so I will just do a very, very rough, quick edit of this scene. So let's start here. I can select all the first frames and go Shift S. Then we'll move to our first frame in the timeline. Select everything, Shift S again. So it starts here. Let's start. Another very useful thing is that you have, here I have three video strips. If I want to watch the bottom one to see if that's uh, an important or relevant moment in the footage that I want to use, uh, what I had to do before was just to hit uh, H to hide um, the, the tracks I don't want to see and, and see the bottom one. Uh, thanks to Campbell, there's a new, new way to do this now. It's just um, if you hold and, uh, and click on and, and hold your click on the strip you want to see, like here, I'm pressing at the same time. Uh, it uh, working with and only this strip and as you can see it's also displaying the handles so uh, I cannot go uh, earlier but and I'm, I'm really really uh, using this a lot because it uh, it prevents you to actually hide and unhide a lot of track it's uh, enabling you to see only the track you're selecting by just clicking on it even not selecting it just clicking on it convenient um, I'm hoping someday we can do the same thing for audio, which would be kind of a solo mod for audio. It's not working at the moment, but I think it should. Um, and we're talking about it, but it's also very convenient. So, uh, if I want to see which uh, camera I use, uh, this is Frank's close-up, this is Victor's uh, shot, and this is the wide shot. Uh, it's uh, very rough shots, but uh, still, it does the job. So, Let's say that we use Victor when he's talking. I come a long way for you. Okay, and the rest will use uh, a mix of uh, this and this, for example. So let's go like this. Okay, and now it turns back. My name is Victor, and let's say we finish here, so we won't use the rest. So that's a very rough edit, and as you can see uh, while I was working, um, it's extremely uh, convenient and practical to be able to let Blender play the timeline and still be able to work on it. Uh, having this possibility to cut, hide, trim, even slide strips uh, while you're still playing the edit is extremely, extremely convenient. Every time I go back to another uh, non-linear editing software, like Final Cut X and stuff, it's, oh, it becomes very frustrating not to be able to do this. So that's a very, very powerful thing that really speeds up your workflow as an editor because you can uh, keep working and adjusting things on the fly as the rest plays and it's extremely, extremely convenient. Um, so, uh, the, one of the new things I wanted to show you also is that once you've done this, um, it's, it's not really uh, edited because uh, it's basically switching through cameras in real time, but uh, when you edit uh, fiction, uh, dialogues and stuff, you always cheat also. If you want to um, maybe the, the actors uh, can have a very good rhythm and stuff, or you can also try to um, emphasize more things they already did, like adding some extra time between some lines, or instead overlapping some of them because you, you, it will bring more tensions or more contrast to the things they say. So you, you do cheat a lot. And, uh, and what I'm doing here, I'm not cheating. I'm just uh, switching like if I was uh, a live action director for sport, uh, for, for a football game, I'm just switching through cameras. And it's not really editing, it's uh, live editing, and it's, it's a bit different. Um, but since everything has to be synchronized, because those microphone tracks are, um, has to be synchronized with the video, uh, that's, that's good to do this like this. So, 
My point is that now in Blender we have a new feature that is very useful also, which is uh, we can use this scene as a strip in another scene and edit this one. Because if I want to remove a line or two uh, of dialogue to speed it up, like to, to, make sure, to make it shorter, like it's uh, 45 seconds I think now, and if I want to scale it down to 25 seconds, um, I would have to go through selecting all the tracks, uh, splitting them, then selecting all of it, and move it, it up, and then goes back, and blah, blah, blah. And as you can see, quite quickly, uh, your, your edit becomes very, very messy. So uh, the, 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 the other way would be, uh, this is my scene, as you can see here in the outliner. I will call it uh, Edit Sync. So I know that's where I synchronize the audio. Uh, let's save this just in case. Then I'll create a new scene, which will be a full copy of it, because um, I want to be sure that I keep uh, the same uh, resolution settings, the same frame rate settings, everything is the same. So I duplicate the whole scene, I change its name, uh, and I will call this just edit then. And I will be sure that I'm selected here, delete everything in the, in the, in the sequence, and then shift A to add uh, something in the, in, the, in the sequence and select edit sync. And bam, here's the strip of my scene. So for now, it's just a strip. Uh, and it's the, the 3D scene, actually. That's, that's the output of the 3D uh, part of Blender. It's not the, 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 the sequencer. So you use the property panel, uh, select the strip, and click on the use sequence button, which is new. And bam, it behaves and looks like a meta strip now. So uh, this is my edit. It's very nice also because you can see uh, the strips, what I did in the, in, the, in the other scene. And if I switch to it, I can check that it's actually the same. So that's cool. That's uh, extremely uh, convenient because now if I want to edit something, I just have one strip to handle and that's way more easier. So um, one other cool thing about this is that if you select it, and want to enter the strip to do some adjustments inside it, um, you can either well, select it and go into it with the, the outliner or here, uh, or if you're in the sequencer and in full screen, you just press tab with the strip selected and bam, there you go. You enter, as a meta strip, you enter what's inside the strip. But if you want to go back, you still have to select the other one. So that's very convenient. Uh, let's try to make it shorter then. So we said we stopped here, roughly, so let's get rid of the rest. He says hi. I'm Victor and that's it. Oop. Hi. Bam. End. <laughs> uh, let's stop this here. So, um, let's try to shorten it a bit, just to, for the sake of uh, the demonstration. So it's already quite long. Okay, to cut. We'll start with the second, excuse me, that's good enough. Okay, so then you can overlap them a bit to make them more, uh, to feel more uh, soft cut instead of very strong cut. Let's say that Frank will start saying come on earlier also. And we'll keep his breath, his breathing. Just a bit. Oop, a bit too much. Let's keep only these two. That Victor will reply more fast too, more early. And we keep this pose. 
because it's nice. So um, I'm already removing like uh, 15 seconds of it, which is quite nice. Um, and let's, let's play it just to see it. There we go. So, uh, as you can see, 30 seconds of edit. Uh, you can uh, way more easily uh, edit some complex scenes and, um, and without struggling with uh, all the tracks. That's, that's very convenient. Uh, so, next step is uh, on the Gooseberry project. When I was doing this, um, it was great to see the actor's performance, to decide on the rhythm for the scenes. To, to also pick and choose the proper uh, takes uh, because we had multiple variations when we were shooting uh, some more fast, stronger, some more shy, some more awkward takes, etc. etc. So you can decide and pick the, the good one uh, way more easily like this. It's also easier if I have to mix two takes. You've seen I had uh, like eight tracks to synchronize and work around. So if I have a second take, it's eight more tracks and blah, blah, blah. So again, your edit looks like uh, extremely complex with 30 tracks instantly. So here you can keep it to a minimum amount of tracks. And it's, at least for mocking up the scenes, extremely fast. And then if you want to do a proper sound edit, you can uh, rework on, uh, on the original files to make uh, more fading things, more smooth and stuff. But that's, that's, that's in the second time. And that's, um, that's OK if you want to, to finalize and masterize stuff. So, uh, next step was to bring some 3D uh, into this. So, uh, the, three, the, the final format we're working on is 2K for DCP. Um, so, the ratio is different, so I have to change it. And as you can see, uh, it squishes the footage. Um, but let's import the 3D layout files. I have those. So that you can see... Uh, that here it's the right format. I'm removing the, the audio out of those OpenGL renders. And um, place them back. And um, to make it work perfectly, I should also do the same thing for proxies. So. Uh, let's select them, uh, select the project option here, give it the same address for the rest, let's save it. And uh, then set select proxy settings, I want 100% override even if there's none already, uh, and then build. So as you can see it's uh, way faster than the, the other uh, proxy calculation because well the footage are shorter and um, and it's already low res so it's very fast to to process so except this one which is quite long <laughs> so again you'll see the nice uh, it's here the nice notification there you go <laughs> very nice and um, let's work with this just to see how it goes so uh, again just clicking on it i will disable the audio scrolling scrubbing not to go crazy um, just clicking on it allows you to see what happens that's cool uh, here is uh, Frank's turning around here this one is Victor facing him and this is uh, Frank being stubborn and pushing the thing so I won't edit this because it's not the same takes it won't be synchronized it's just to show you the the idea so just spotting the moment where so this is where Frank uh, is about to turn around a long way to see you Frank bam I put a marker here uh, you can also do this live while playing which is extremely convenient
Okay, so uh, as you can see, it's very fast to do. Well, there's only three shots, but there it goes. So it's absolutely not in sync with the image for now. I'm kind of in the middle of something here. Yes, thank you. And as you can see, high is a bit too early on the sound, so that's very easy to correct. Again, you just select the strip, the video strip with the actors, cut it, and there we go. So we have an edit, uh, even a rough one, but that's very practical uh, that way because uh, if I need to check or show uh, the animators the reference, then I just have to disable the, the layout scenes and render this uh, to give them uh, the, the performance uh, the actors deliver based on the audio they are using. So that's extremely convenient and if I want to see only Pierre or Renat, uh, again it's also very easy, just select the thing, press tab, disable the tracks I don't want to see anymore and focus on the one I want to show them. And it's um, again extremely powerful, extremely fast to use, uh, that's the, yeah, it's extremely convenient. So, uh, new things also, again, uh, there's still a few other new things. Uh, one other one is the follow option. So, in Blender, when uh, the, you were zooming or if you have a long timeline and something like this happens, so you don't see your uh, green timeline anymore um, and you play, well, everything goes smooth, but you don't see where you are. Uh, the, the timeline does whatever it wants off screen. So it's a bit annoying um, not to be able to, to, to see this. So. Uh, thanks to Andonis, we have a new feature now, which is in the timeline um, panel, and you go to the playback uh, panel and select the follow option. Yes, it's enabled. Uh, so now, if I play, oh, you see, that's magic. Uh, timeline went, um, the whole uh, screen shifts. Bam. So we always follow the timeline, you don't care where you are, and that's extremely convenient, you just focus on zooming or de-zooming, and... Uh, and you just keep using this. It's also working on some other part of Blender, uh, in, the, in the animators panels also. Uh, the uh, dope sheet and action editor, I think, if I remember correctly, or even the, the F-curve stuff. So, uh, yeah, uh, that's uh, extremely powerful and, and, and useful. Um, I think that's about it. Um, I just wanted to give you a quick tip. Uh, beware, uh, some of the gooseberry branches built are not always stable, especially on Mac. Uh, while recording the, the, the previous tutorials, I, I had multiple crashes. Um, quick tip if you want to be sure that nothing gets uh, disappeared uh, from your computer all the time uh, when you crash, uh, be sure that in your settings, in your preference settings in system in the file uh, panel, the TMP uh, folder is set to a natural folder. Uh, go and create it uh, yourself somewhere on your hard drive. Um, create a TMP folder so that Blender, when it crashes or auto saves because it does it regularly, uh, has, a, has a proper um, directory set in the default settings because by default in, uh, I think on Mac, uh, this folder doesn't exist. So it, uh, it, uh, it points to somewhere that doesn't exist so you don't have any crash files. So if you crash, you lose everything, you cannot go back. But if you do have this, you never lose more than 30 seconds or a minute of your work. It's uh, extremely convenient. So that's about it about the the recording tools, the recording, the the, the editing tools. Uh, if I forget anything or if you have some questions, feel free to 
to ask me anything on the comments, I will uh, happily reply and I hope uh, this recording went smooth. So uh, thank you very much for watching this. Um, I hope that we'll have some new features for the sound um, if needed. And uh, oh, I almost forgot. That's, that's what I forgot. If you want to do some fading, uh, especially for sound, I can give you some quick tip. Um, because I was using this a lot and it can be improved, but uh, let's import some, uh, some music, for example. So, here is a mock-up of the music for the film. So, I will not do the best uh, music video edit live, this is just to show you how I do it. So, uh, to do this, well, first you can display the waveform if needed. So that you see where the music really starts, for example, here. Let's say that when Victor turns around, it's a miracle. Uh, when Frank turns around, it's a miracle. Uh, and I want, oh, yeah, here it goes. Nice crash. Thank you, Blender. So uh, let's kill him. Thank you. Let's start it back. And as I've just shown you, if I go to Recover Autosave, select the tutorial, bam, everything is back to normal. I did, don't have the last import, but the rest is okay. I just have to save again, because then it will remap all the path to the actual path and not to the TMP folder, and uh, reload. And now I have the sound, the proxies, everything. Thank you, autosave. <laughs> so, uh, bringing the audio back. Uh, da, 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 where is it? Desktop, edit. There it is. Draw waveforms. I save, just in case. So that's a miracle. And I want uh, the music to start here. So get rid of this, uh, and to fade until this point. So to do this, uh, simply you just select the strip, go to the moment you want the volume to be on, press I to create a keyframe key on the volume, go to the first frame you need, press, uh, press go to zero and press I again. So you do add keyframes, and, uh, and I have a workspace I did for, for only for this, uh, which allows me to see uh, some uh, some graph editor panel, not F curve. Sorry, I'm a bit old school. And uh, and there you can edit your um, your uh, your handles, your Bezier handles, so that if you want to have a clean, smooth start for the music, there you have it. That's magic. Uh, <laughs> one, one small trick is that uh, if you change this, if you de uh, like decide to start it like a bit later, make it like shorter and stuff, most of the time Blender don't really properly update this. So, well, I'm lucky it does, but sometimes it doesn't, especially if you're working for a long time inside Blender, you see the memory usage going up and sometimes it, it blocks and prevents to refresh properly uh, what you're doing. So if you're facing that such a case, this is your friend. Uh, the refresh sequencer button, I always keep it uh, close to, 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 to the UI and press it uh, all the time. Every time you feel something is wrong or you have a doubt about something on your edit, it doesn't properly display some animation for fading the video or the audio refresh sequencer is your best friend uh, because then it will purge the RAM and you will see the RAM goes extremely low again and, um, and you can start filling it up uh, working as needed. So uh, that's it. Uh, that's about all of the tricks I can uh, show you uh, here and, um, and again it was uh, very nice working with the editor for this. Uh, most of the of the performance issue were solved, so uh, we still need some features here and there, I think. But uh, overall, it's a 
very good and fun tool to use uh, and to work with. So I hope you liked it. And uh, again, if you have questions or want me to explain and cover more stuff, feel free to ask in the comments. Bye.